Uh, let me show you, everybody, what we're aiming for. Yes. Yes, try to test them. Yeah, with Kiki showing it all the time. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome, Jennifer. Thanks. <laughs> now, let's see, is it Shift T to repeat? All right, we'll let Jen take over whenever she's ready. Yep. Okay, so. <laughs> this is what I want to teach everybody today. And I want to show you this first because it'll, it will make you pay close attention to what I will show you next. <laughs> so what you're looking at is something that looks more complicated than it actually is. You're looking at a cloth effects deformation that occurs before subdivision. And then it's cranked, the subdivision is cranked up to a million polys. And then you have a bump displacement that occurs after subdivision. And the bump displacement is through a trick, it's only occurring where it's being displaced. So I'm sure that you will find the following steps worth your time. Now, uh, how many people here are familiar with cloth effects or subdivision ordering? OK. Mm -hmm. then, then maybe I'll do this from scratch, and we'll see how it goes. So first what we do is we fire up Modeler. And first, I'm going to create a grid that's uh, 10 meters, 0 meters high, 10 meters. And for segments, 60 by 60. And then because I want to be able to subdivide this guy, I'm going to hit Tab so that what we're dealing with is subpatches. It's all subpatches. And I'm going to save this as, well, the grid. Now I have another object that I made. Actually, I've got three because I wasn't sure uh, which one would be best. And it's a little object built to the uh, it's built to the dimensions of the Martian rovers. Not quite as good as Dan Moss's Martian rover, though. It's this is just for collision collision detection. If you were going to do if you were going to uh, do collision detection for something complicated, I strongly recommend creating a proxy object like this and then doing the calculation on that. I also have one with slightly different wheels that I call sharp edged wheels. And the reason I, and both of them will work. I just think that something with rounded wheels gives slightly nicer results. And I'll uh, try to demonstrate both in the calculation scene. So that's pretty much it for modeling. You create a grid that's made of subpatches and has enough density, enough polygons to actually capture a deformation. <coughs> so End of modeler, pull up layout. So first thing we do is we load in the object that we just created. Whoops, the grid. Now it's going to load in at a subpatch level of three. Whoops. Let me go to its properties. Now for cloth effects calculations, I st you have to set it to last because that way it will be doing its calculations not on the uh, subdivided object, but on the underlying points of its cage, the, the raw points that you saw in Modeler. You want cloth effects to happen on the cage object. So set the, the subdivision order to last and you're guaranteed to get that. Let me zoom out a bit so that I can uh, have some panels open while I, I show you this thing. So let me go to the scene editor and set this to black because that way when I click off of it you can kind of see what's going on texture shaded solid wireframe. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add another object, the little rover. This is the one with rounded wheels. Okay, 
So I'm going to start with it over here. And I'm going to try to cheat my way through this. Because I'm too lazy to actually animate the rotation. So I'm going to set uh, rotation, uh, sorry, align to path. So let's see, so set this over here. And let me uh, turn off this blasted behavior. Okay. So with the lined path turned on, it goes in a straight line. But let's make it more fun. Let's uh, see how much of this thing we can wreck. Okay. Did you have to build the model in a specific orientation for the align the path? Uh, yeah, I recommend. Actually, I did it wrong the first time. I had it facing negative Z, so this thing was going rear end first. <laughs> so I went to Modeler and I turned it around so that uh, it's it was facing positive Z. Then it worked. So yeah, I, I keep getting them mixed up. But that's right, Dave. Positive Z. So yes, uh, when you turn it on, you'll know which direction it's supposed to face. <laughs> Although a workaround is that you parent it to a null, you let the null do the aligned path, and then you just rotate it on top of the null. Huh? Oh, that's an idea. OK, now I'm going to do something that will require a slight complication in the surfacing afterwards. So everyone pay attention to what I'm going to enter in the y value right now, 0.1. And the reason I'm doing that is so that way the wheels are intersecting the plane. Because if I set it to 0, there's nearly not much for collision that's going to occur at, at, at that value. So I'm going to set it to 0.1. But everyone remember that value because, well, there will be a quiz later. <laughs> so. We're going to see if ClothFX forgives me for starting out with the wheels already intersecting. In my earlier test, what I did was I had it parented to a null that gradually lowered it into the ground over 20 frames leading up to zero, and then it continued on its way. But we'll see what happens if I just let it figure it out on frame zero. Sometimes it'll let you do that, and sometimes it won't if, it, if there's intersecting occurring. Sometimes it figures out, sometimes it doesn't. So let's go to the grid. Add dynamic collision. Oh, wait, sorry. Cloth. The grid is deforming, not, not the rover. Yes. All right, and then let's go to the rover proxy. Add dynamic collision, effects collision. I don't want it to spring away at uh, twice the force with which the points are hitting it. I just want it to deform. So we're going to do it wrong. Let's just leave, uh, actually, cloth effects, if, if this is left to its default of none, Nothing happens. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. OK, so let's make it a little less wrong. Let's turn on collision. Tell it all. And something horrible will happen. Whoa. Yes. That's cool. <laughs> now, <laughs> no, it's horrible. No, it's, it's horribly, horribly wrong is what it is. This is not, this is not my vision. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's all right. So here's the problem is uh, these points are continuing their inertia. Like as soon as, you, as they're hitting, they're, there's really nothing to, to stop. And they're gradually coming to a stop because the resistance is set to 1. But I want them to stop a little bit quicker than this. So what you do is you set resistance to something horrible like 100. And you hit Calculate. What, re what resistance does is... It's uh, these points 
it, it uh, calms the points down, it, it slows them to a stop. All the forces of cloth effects will always be overridden by collision detection. Collision detection happens first. But then after the collision occurs, uh, when it's just free floating in space, then these other forces are respected and resistance is one of them. And so you crank up the resistance and notice it just, all the point, the points just sort of stopped. So they're stopping where they, they were uh, displaced originally. There's uh, other refinements you can do. This is pretty much close to what you want. You could probably move on to the next step from here. But if you want further refinements, right now the spring force it's trying to pull the points back together after they were pushed apart, and that kind of keeps the geometry looking nice. It causes a little bit of movement, as you can see. If I set the spring force to zero, which is not what I used for the previous calculation, then notice it doesn't pull the points back into place because there's no force to pull the points back into their original positions. This is a little risky because it, uh, with really high speed calculations, you can have stuff like just just overlapping each other and then when it's subdivided you get really sharp looking rifts mm -hmm. so a little spring force is good to kind of ease everything back together plus it creates a slight sloshiness that you'd expect from mud so you see how it's pulling itself back together i don't know if you can tell from here or not but spring forces only work along polygonal edges. Let's partner it with substructure, which works, which what it does is it pulls points of opposing corners of polygons back together. You see those little cross braces that appeared? See these little cross braces that appeared? Each one is a spring force that will pull the opposing points of each square back together, or it will attempt to. And it's good to set it to the same value of the spring force because then you have even forces trying to pull everything back together. In this case, it's probably a very subtle improvement. But notice that when spring was set to zero, you had extremely sharp, like it was like uh, uh, just really sharp deformation right here. Here it's a little more rounded because the, the spring force is trying to pull the po polygons back together. The resistance is keeping everything tamped in place as much as possible. So uh, that's, that's one set of values you might use. You'll notice at this point you're just kind of messing with what might look nicer. You could try increasing the viscosity so that the, it makes the points more sluggish. I don't know how much of a difference that would make here, but we can try it. I didn't try it in the calculation that I showed you earlier. But higher viscosity values will make it look, uh, move more like taffy, like thick taffy, and, the, and lower viscosity values will make it move more like water. So when you're happy with the way it looks, you save out this motion, save motion, and you now have an asset. You treat this, this is now a recorded deformation. You don't need cloth effects anymore unless you wanted to play it back. And I'm gonna save my calculation scene. Let's see. And I'm gonna create a new scene called playback. This is, this is why I recommend for this particular technique is that you use one scene to create the, the asset and then you use another scene to, to play back the asset. And I'll show you why. I'm going to disable cloth effects. And what I'm going to do now in the deform tab, I'm going to play back that asset using MDD displacement, which is part of LightWave 10. MDD displacement. If you are using LightWave 9.6, there is a third-party plugin called MDD Pointer Node that can do the same thing by Dennis Pontanier, and you can find it through Ken's excellent LightWave plugin database. So let's load that asset. It's going to first look invert cache, but ClothFX defaults to saving in the dynamics, uh, the dynamics folder, the grid. 